Hey everybody, it's Laura with Jaw and Tittle Typewriters. Welcome today. I have got a very handsome Royal Quiet Deluxe for you and I can't wait to show you. This is a 1947, I believe, very post-war, has the post-war look to it. Um, just very classic machine, glass keys. I love the feel of the glass on my fingers. So this is so fun. And there's a cardinal right outside my window. I don't know if you can hear him or not. Okay, um, but it's a beautiful spring day. I love spring. The hummingbirds came back this week. Okay, let's go ahead and um, take a look at this. So um, in the very back is where we're gonna set our tabs. So here's your tab key, but you have to flip it up and then you just press and drag. Oops. There we go. These are pretty stiff. But this is how you set your tabs, okay? And um, those are really stiff back there, but they do move. All right, and then your margins. This has a magic margin on the left side but you can also flip it open and set your margins by pressing and dragging. So there's a little arrow right there and that tells you where the um, right margin is. So if you wanna bring it in um, and the left margin, if you just put it where you want it, it's already here, so maybe you wanna move it out. So you just hold it in while releasing your carriage and then release both, so both of them and now your margin is further out. And if you wanna come in, then just pull it in and you can hear it kind of click into place. So that's how margins work. And to release your carriage, there's a little tab behind each roller and you just pull that forward. The carriage is gonna move as far as you have the margins set. Now the bell does not work on this typewriter, which is sad because I love the sound of bells. Okay, here is your paper release. That releases the tension on the paper and then your line selector. Oh, that was the roller release, sorry. Line selector is right here for one or two lines. And then this, that kind of releases that. So um, if let's say you're trying to line things up just right in the, when you turn the handle, it's gonna click every half of a line. And sometimes that just doesn't work and you need a little bit of wiggle room, that gives you wiggle room. Just make sure it's re-engaged, okay? I'm gonna move this to, oh, there's the bell. I'm not sure why it didn't, I guess it'll work when it wants to. <laughs> okay, open up the top after you've moved the carriage to the left because you don't want the handle to get in the way of the top. So you just pop this open and um, it has, a little uh, piece inside that's kind of coming out. I can, we can probably try to re-glue that, but. Okay, here we have a universal ribbon that we've put inside and it's a brand new ribbon. And you just pop it in and pull it out, super easy. Just make sure it's threaded through everything just right. I have an up close photo of this, so click on that product listing link down in the description so you can look at the photos and save the photo of this escapement area so that you have a reference, okay? Now remember, when you get to the end of the spool it's and you're at the end of the ribbon, it's not the end of the ink. You just need to reverse the direction, which you do right here, okay? Just go back and forth. And so you can go back and forth on your ribbon many times before you need to replace it because there's so much ink in that ribbon. But when it is time to replace it, you can get another one at our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com. Now with our ribbons, you do need to manually reverse them. Okay, let me lift this up. So that's your ribbon reversal. This is called a touch control, and that just determines how hard these strike bar type bars down in here are gonna strike your paper. This is your color selector, so you've got red, black, it's actually a little blue dot, and then the white is stencil. You're not gonna need it, and the typewriter won't work if it's on that, op that option, so make sure it is always on the blue or the red. Now, let me just tell you one thing. If while you're typing and all of a sudden it's, the font is getting faint or it's not typing right, 
or it even stops and locks up on you, check two things. One, reverse the direction of your ribbon. That solves almost everything. Secondly, make sure your color selector is firmly engaged on the red or that black. Okay, let's go ahead and load a piece of paper and do some typing. Okay, so you set your paper right here, turn the handle, make sure to bring your paper underneath the metal bar and then pop that bar back on tight, that top of it. It holds that paper taut against the roller. Um, and then I like to check, I'll bring it all the way up to see if it's even and mine is uneven. So I'm gonna bring this paper release forward, straighten out my paper, re-engage, and now we're ready to type. So this is a 1947, and if you notice, there's no number one, so you use a lowercase l, 1947. Oh, and I made a mistake. What do you do when you make a mistake? Well, you just backspace. But remember, backspace doesn't erase. You just type over and keep going. And actually, it's an Underwood Universal, but there we go. Let's keep going. Now, these keys feel wonderful. Let's check our tab. That was further over I want to go, so I'll just do it manually. Um, the shift lock on this machine, oh, sorry, that was a different one. The shift lock works just fine on this one. Um, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I do, I have a photo day and I have a video day. So I do all the videos on one day, all the photos on another day. And sometimes I get my typewriters mixed up. because then it takes me um, a long time to upload and edit and then get it onto YouTube. And so it's just, they turn into very long days and I get confused. Okay, so this is typing really well. I have it on red, so I'm gonna move it over to black and let's do some sentences. Okay, so the bad thing about not having a bell is you don't know when you're at the end of your margin, so it just stops. But what do you do? There's a margin release right here. Just finish my word and hit the return handle. Okay, so my font is starting to get just a little bit lighter than it was before, which tells me I have it going the wrong direction. So I am going to switch it. Okay, I'm gonna type that again, <clears throat> but this time I'm actually gonna move my margin out a little bit because I have it super narrow, which was on purpose, but I'm gonna move it out. Okay, let's do this sentence again. Oh, the, I heard the bell, did you hear it? Oh, I didn't hear it that time. Oh my goodness. That was so fun to type. I love the tick, 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 tick. It sounded like a newsroom and it was so smooth. And I have, um, people tell me I have 10 year old hands and I do, they're very petite. And so sometimes typing can be difficult because I just don't have, you know, the length in my fingers to really hit down. But this one 
was so easy on my hands. I could quit, I could get into a flow. Um, Y'all, I really like this one. So if you have smaller hands, um, or if you're a fast typist, or you just love the look and the feel of the, you know, post-war era things, um, and you're looking for something, not only is this gonna be a handsome addition to your house, but this is a highly functioning, excellent performing typewriter. You're gonna really enjoy this. When I was typing, I actually had fun because I love the feel of these glass keys on my fingers. So enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. If you have one already, I hope this video helped you out so much. And if it did, please give me a thumbs up and um, visit our website at jotintillotypewriters.com. Look for, like we have here, um, we have non-slip typewriter pads, we have covers, we have ribbons, we even have typewriter art. So please shop our website. Thanks so much for visiting and have a blessed day.